The most commonly asked question is, uh, what KPIs should I be working to in recruitment? And the answer is, if you're using them like most people do, none of them, because they don't make any difference at all. Most people use KPIs as kind of like a scoreboard, and they're worthless for that. But if you use KPIs properly, they can make you an enormous amount of money. They'll change your lifestyle and they'll change the way you work forever. So let me show you how to do it. So let's start looking at uh, KPIs as most people use them. Now this is, um, I don't know whether you would regard this as a simplified version, but certainly I would. This is a, a sort of probably fairly normal uh, version of the kind of KPIs that people uh, keep track of. Um, I'm not putting anything like uh, connect time or DMs out or any of that. I've just put in the real basics there. Now, this is how most people tend to use KPIs. It's a scoreboard, effectively. And that's the problem, because with this kind of view of uh, KPIs, you can't really do anything with it. All you can see is that Dick Jane and Spot have produced exactly the same amount of revenue. One's done it with three starters, one's done it with five, and one's done it with oh, three starters. But it doesn't tell you how to use those numbers, how to use those KPIs to actually improve somebody's productivity, their effectiveness, or even the amount that they're billing. And that's what KPIs can do if you use them properly. But unfortunately, most people don't. Now, the bold view of this would be to look at the top line and look at the bottom line and go, oh, well, Dick's only made 100 calls and he made 21 grand. If he made 200 calls, he made 42 grand. Yeah, probably not. He'd probably make about 10. Because what this doesn't tell you yet is anything to do with quality or process or what makes a key difference and what doesn't. So as it is at the moment, we don't know whether to tell Jane to do fewer calls so that she'll make placements at a higher level. We don't know whether everybody should be doing the same number of calls as spot. We don't know whether the first or second uh, interview ratio that we've got from Jane is sustainable compared to that. It, we don't know anything from this. And unfortunately, that's what most recruitment firm systems, whether it's your know, whiteboard on the wall or whether it's an IT based system, that's how most of them work. That's what most of them tell you. And it's pretty much useless. So I'm going to walk you through a little process. I'm going to build this as you go so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, um, over here, you'll see I've got uh, a worksheet for Spot. I've got a worksheet for Jane. And I was not going to put a worksheet specifically for Dick onto YouTube. Just no. It probably would have done my um, views quite, quite a deal good, but I'll get them a different way. Thank you. So let's work through the process. So let's just look at the first producer let's just look at dick and see what he's done and what we're going to do rather than just looking at these numbers we're going to look at the conversion factor so from 100 new biz calls he picked up 20 roles from the from each of those 20 roles he sent out three cvs which gave you 60 cvs out a quarter of those turned into interviews 40 percent of those turned to second 60 percent turned to offers Three quarters turned to starts, which are pretty good. And the average fee was £7,000. So three placements, £7,000. And we've got those conversion factors. Now, I'll get to comparing one person with another in a second. But what I'm looking at here is personal productivity. For this one person to get the most value they possibly can from everything they're doing. So let me just show you what we do. The next thing we do is start to look at, okay, we've got those conversion factors and you could do those by the way as percentages, you can do them as whichever you like. I've just done them as decimals there. Now let's say, for example, that all we did was try to get a 10% improvement in every one of those areas. So we try to get you know, 10% more calls and we try to get 10% um, better on the roll um, the, the, the CVs out and we try to get 10% better basically just 10% better on everything now quite often when I say to people okay well if you got 10% better at every part what would that mean 
And uh, the majority of people will go, oh, it's about, I don't know, 10, 15% difference. And it really, really isn't. Well, let me show you here what the difference it makes. Yeah, so I'll just unhide this, because here's what I prepared earlier. So we get 10% more here, okay? 10% more calls, 10% more effective on each of those calls, gives us 24 more roles. Same again, 10% more effective. We're now sending out 80 CVs. 10% more effective. We've now got 22 first interviews. Our first to second ratio goes up very slightly, which means we get eight uh, interviews, eight seconds instead of six. We get five offers instead of four. We get four offers, sorry, four starts instead of three. And our billings goes from 21,000 to 33,500. Now, if I asked somebody to get 10% better at something, just 10% over the next quarter, can you get 10% better at something? Pretty much everyone will go, yeah, I suppose so. It's not, yeah, it's not a massive ask. It's not like I'm, tr I'm trying to get you to double your revenue. It's not like I'm trying to get you to you know, add 50% onto your revenue in, in, the, in the space of a quarter, because that would be insane, except that that's what you've just done. You've gone from 21,000 to 33,500 just by getting a little bit better at lots of things. Now, if you want to get better at, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to improve your first interview to second interview ratio, I could give you, I don't know, top of my head, I could give you 60, maybe 70 different ways to improve your first to second interview ratio. And I think I'm probably being conservative at that. And if you apply some or all of those 60 or 70 different things purely focused on improving your first to second interview ratio, is it conceivable that you might get 10% or, or improvement or, or even better? Of course it is. You know, 10% just takes a little, it, it's, it's, you know, having one less ice lolly during the summer. Um, it's just a little bit of an improvement. But the, result is literally exponential and you can apply that technique across the board now if i actually broke down the route to winning business if i broke down the, the process between a cold outreach to somebody whether it's a new business call or a dm or an email or a loom call or whatever it might be if i broke all of those down and started at that and ended up at the invoice gets paid between those two Areas. There's a lot of steps potentially. I've just picked out the, the big and obvious ones there, but there's a lot of potential steps in there. So the more steps there are, by the way, the more opportunities there are for improvement. But we can do something a little bit more scientific with it. So let's take this person's process and look at this. Now, if I were to give you two tricks here, it would be to start as early in the process as you, as you can with your improvements and to start with the lowest number that you can for the improvements. Why would I do that? Because it gives the multiplier effect time to kip, kick in. What we're actually dealing with here and here is compound interest in the same way as if you save a certain amount from being 21 to 30, and you invest a certain amount each month, that's uh, over the course of your lifetime, that nine years of investment is worth more than the rest of your life added together. If you're not sure you know what I mean, have a look on YouTube. There's a lot of videos talking about the power of compound interest and investment. This is compounding. You're adding the percentages together over the course of the process, not over the years, over the course of the process instead. Now, let's look at this as though... Our friend Dick here was one of my consultants. What would I recommend him to do? Well, he's doing a hundred new business calls, new business contacts, and Jane's doing three hundred. Spot's doing two hundred. So, is it is it conceivable that Dick could improve the number of contacts he's making without damaging? The quality of what he's doing now there'll be that's the obvious pushback by the way every time you you talk to someone who's got a low number at the start they always go oh yeah but it's all about quality 
Well, yes, but Ferrari still managed to make a lot of cars without screwing up the quality that much. So you, you can always always deal with that trade-off. So let's be a little bit conservative. I'm not going to ask this person to try and do 200 calls. I'm going to try and ask him to do 135. Okay, so we'll start with 135 there. Okay. Now, what about the roles they're listing? They're, they're converting from 100 contacts. They're getting 20 roles. Okay. Well, they've got a, which gives them a 20% conversion factor. James is well, 10%, which honestly, we'll come to her in a second. Um, uh, Spots is about 12, 12.5%, which, okay. So 20, you know, that's 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 pretty good, to be honest. That's, that's It looks like he's doing pretty well. But, you know, there's always room for improvement somewhere. So let's try and get you know, a, a conservative. Let's be very conservative and try and get 5% increase in it. So that goes to there. Okay. CV is out. He's sending three out. Is there any? Is there any point in sending four rather than three? If he's that accurate, probably not. Um, we've got a twenty-five percent, point two five conversion rate between the CVs that go out and the first interviews. Well, Jane's getting twenty-nine percent. Spot's getting twenty. So he's, he's probably not many miles off. Let's let's leave that as is. About a third of his first interviews turned to seconds. Okay. 70% of Jane's first turned to second. 70% give or take, 67% of Spot's first to seconds. Well, okay. So we've we've definitely got room for improvement there, haven't we? But again, let's let's be conservative. Let's let's be very, very conservative and add 10% on. So let's take that from 0.33 to 0.37, yeah, 37. I'm rounding up, obviously. Okay. And second to offers, he's on 60%. Jane's on 0.43%. Spot's on 50%, so he's not many miles off. And starts, he's running it. There he's running at seventy or seventy percent, so that's that's pretty good to be fair. That's, that's I could live with that. That's fairly good. So just by tweaking the number of calls here and a very small tweak on the number of roles that get picked up, we've just added. We've gone from twenty-one thousand in a month up to nearly twenty-five. We've made almost no difference to what he's doing but we've put nearly 20% onto his business. Now let's get a little bit more ambitious. Let's say we take, given that his, the level here is not too bad, three CVs out, that's fine. 25% of the CVs go to first. Hmm. Okay, 25%. Well, we've got 20% with Spot. We've got 29% with Jane. So 25%, that's all right, but let's try and get a little bit better. So let's change that to 0.275. And now we've gone from 21,000 to 27,000. Now, I'm sure you can probably see where the different areas are here. If you then manage to get a little bit more money here, if you manage to get a little, you know, work slightly higher level roles or get a slightly better fee scale, you're going to get the improvements there. So if there's any number of things that you can do along the process, but the more changes you make and the earlier in the process you make them, the bigger the impact it will have on your bottom line. Now, just by making a few tweaks here, the number of contacts, a very small increase in the number of roles listed, a very small increase in the number of CVs out, a very small number of, uh, sorry, increase in the number of first to seconds. That's all we've done to produce a six and a half thousand pound a month, six and a quarter thousand pound a month increase in Dick's billings. Not bad. Not bad, I hear you say. Well, let's look at this. Okay. This is now Jane. Well, personally, um, unless Jane is in a significantly different market to Dick here, 
or spot here, what immediately pops out at me is this. Personally, I'm going to focus on that because what that looks like to me, and I don't know what your view would be if you were her manager, but for me, she's making a lot of new business calls and picking up a lot of crappy roles. So that, to me, would say that she's either pretty crappy here, which would be held up by the numbers, or she's calling the wrong people. So we've immediately got some leverage to play with. For me, I would look at this area. I would ignore the rest of the KPIs until I understood what was going on here. Because if we could work out what was going on here and get her back up to 7,000, well, without doing anything else, she's now making 35,000 a month instead of 21. Because all of her colleagues are making an average placement fee of 7,000, she's doing 4.2. Instantly, we've made an impact there. And my instinct will be that actually it's probably this that's a problem. She's making too many calls to the wrong people. But let's back off that for a second and look at this. So let's say that we kept her number of calls unaltered, but we improved this to what the rest of her colleagues are doing. So somewhere between 1.2. Yeah, there's, there's any number of things we can do to get her improvement there. Now let's have a look at um, our friend here. Let's have a look at friend spot just take that back i've been messing around earlier now with our friend spot he's doing more calls than dick and fewer calls than jane he's got a, a conversion rate in terms of the roles he's picking up he's somewhere between the two so i'm not going to touch the number of calls because uh, the role levels look to be about right when would i ask dick to go from 100 to 200 certainly not in the short term so let's just have a look at this so instead let's try and get a bit of an improvement here now we've got dick coming in at 20 percent <coughs> excuse me jane's coming in at 10 percent it's entirely feasible that we can get um our friend spot here to get somewhere between the two so let's put him on 0.175 Okay, and we keep the calls at the same, or the contacts at the same. Now, if we do nothing else, if we didn't change a thing because of the multiplier effect of everything that comes through here, we have just taken our friend Spot from 21,000 up to 29,400. One change because we changed the right thing at an early enough stage and we got the multiplier effect as it came through. That's how you use KPIs. If you use KPIs in a targeted, focused, deliberate way, they are the most powerful tool that anybody in recruitment can have. If you use them as a scoreboard, they're just there for a bit of ego stroking and a bit of spanking. And honestly, I can get those outside the office. Thank you very much. So that's it. KPIs for a nerd like me, the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Hopefully you've seen the benefit and the potential power of KPIs as a tool for transforming your sales figures, the way you work and your overall approach to improving your business and your financial success. If this has been good, obviously hit the like button and also um, subscribe and hit the notification so you see when the next one of these goodies is coming out for you. Um, and I'm sure you'll have some questions. So go down below and in the comments, put, feel free to put down whatever question you've got. I'll get back to you directly as quickly as I can do. If you've got anything that's a little bit more controversial or you want to talk about one-to-one, -one, contact me via uh, DM on LinkedIn or Instagram. Very happy to chat on either of those platforms. If this has been good, please feel free to uh, share it with your friends and let them know to uh, subscribe as well. I'll see you again next time. Take care.